Hello, I'm Stuart Lee. Howdy doody, I'm Richard Heron. And welcome yeah. back to more coverage of the Just For Laughs Festival, which we're at here in Montreal. Quite good. Yeah, it's quite good, but me and Stu are literally pissing ourselves. Do you say that? I don't. I don't. Because we have to perform in some live shows here in Montreal, but we've got no idea what makes Canadians laugh. After all, this is the country that made a comedy god of Dan, Dan Aykroyd. Aykroyd. That's right. So we've been looking at hours of uh, archive footage of the Montreal Festival to try and work it out. And today... <laughs> oh, today we're going to be looking at footage of comedians of the past here talking about the idea of marriage. And you know, I was thinking that's quite apt, because uh, you and I are in a comedy double act, of yeah, course, aren't yeah, we? Yeah. And being in a comedy double act is quite like being in a marriage, isn't it? Similar in some ways, except that in a marriage, if you reach a kind of emotional impasse, you can normally make up for it with a bout of hot, loving, passionate sex, you know. So. <laughs> well, we could do no, that, we can't Stu. Do that. <laughs> well, so, no. now let's well, look. we could. No, we can't. No, we can't do that. You don't understand. So, now let's look. You don't understand. Uh, no, we can't. We could. No, we can't. We, we can't do it. Just try it. Just try it. Just try it. No. You want it. I don't. I tell you your problem, what? mate. You're homophobic. I'm not homophobic, oh. Rich. I just hate you. You're, you understand? you're afraid of not, me. You're afraid, afraid of the feelings not I afraid of the make feelings. come up inside no. you. The burning no. passion. No. You so let's look at the archive and watch out for the way that the North American audience just love the idea of someone being married. Someone says, I'm married. They go mad. Tons of non ironic, genuine applause. Look out for it. Let's go. That's right, Bobby the Pitbull of Comedy Slayton there. It says in his press release that his motto is kill or be killed. He seems to hate the world, doesn't he, Rich? He's like Andrew Cananan in that respect. Stu. And in one other. Ooh. He's scary. He is very and, uh, scary. We've got to talk to him in the last episode of the series, actually, so we're a ah, bit frightened. Look did, you, did you spot that marriage thing there, though? Everyone was chat clapping of for marriage. I did. You asked us to watch did that. You, did Don't patronise me. Well, we tried to exploit that on stage last night for our own ends, and here's what happened. Let's have a look. But today I decided to get uh, engaged to be married today. Oh. Thanks. Thanks. I actually, uh, it's good news for me today because I actually have been married for five years today. It's my anniversary. Five years. <laughs> and uh, good news for me as well, actually, because uh, today I have actually been married for ten years today. <laughs> <laughs> When I said earlier that I'd got engaged, it actually meant that I am so in love with my wife that we decided to reaffirm our vows to... That's what I meant by that. Nice. Ten years. Thanks. Thank you. That was brilliant, wasn't it, Steve? Well, well, here's Phil Kay. He's from Scotland, where marriage is booed. And now, some marriage advice for our male viewers. Guys, now, if you are married and you've had an affair, that's a bad thing, but it's usually best to admit it to your wife and hope that she forgives you. But there are certain individuals you must never admit to having an affair with or your marriage is over. These include your ex-girlfriend, her best friend, her mother, her gran, her mother and her gran together in a kinky night of bondage lesbian sex, uh, your own mother, that's quite an important one, an inanimate object, especially if it's one of her more treasured personal possessions, and her pet. All bad. Don't oh, sleep. Yeah. Don't, don't and um, and uh, Natalie Redman of Turret Road, Balham, South London in England. What? It was a bit of a specific one, but it worked for me. I thought it was worth giving out that advice, you know. How do you know I slept with Natalie Redman of Turret Road, Balham, South London, England? I didn't. Well, I haven't. Ah. OK. Oh. Hey, Rich! Yeah? Make me a sandwich. No. Make me a sandwich. No. Make me a sandwich. No. Make not, me a... No. Not unless you say please. Make me a sandwich, please, Rich. Certainly. Now, what would you like in it? Well, I'd like... No, you've missed the point. What? I don't actually want a sandwich. Well, why'd you keep like... on asking for I'm it, I'm just then. trying to be, like, you know, good. I just haven't got it, have I? Haven't no, you haven't. Yeah, well, it's good, Stu. Don't knock it. It's good. But you know Bobby Slayton. Make me a sandwich. No, no. no. Make, me a, make me a sandwich now. No, it's too make quiet. Me... Can, I make... Can I have a sandwich, please? That's now. Quite good. I can't do it. See you next time. Make me a sandwich, la la la. That would work. Looks like Richard it's Jenny. Not, no, it's okay. Not very good. Oh no, it needs an English idiom, doesn't it? Make me. Can I have English? Can I? Uh, hello. Can I have a sandwich, please, and some crisps to go with that? So if you wait your turn, sir, certainly. See, the English Bobby Slayton. Make me a. Can I have any uh, bread a roll? A roll would be tuna roll. Make me a tuna roll, please. That's not too much trouble. And. That's it. Make me a roll. And some soup. And then we'll, we'll, won't say any more about it. Cheers. Sorry about this. 